This is something everyone in the real estate industry is talking about right now, and I'm going to give you a different take on it today. So you've heard about fake news. Have you heard of fake new? Because unfortunately, that is exactly what Canada's new mortgage charter is. Even though it's being touted as a bailout for homeowners and a way to help those experiencing financial hardship when it comes to homeownership. And a side note, if you are a mortgage holder and you're experiencing financial hardship, stick around because by explaining this policy, I'm going to be sharing with you a little known rule that very few people are aware of. Save money on your mortgage and keep your house if you're in financial hardship. But the point here is that this set of six rules in the Canadian Mortgage Charter isn't new. It's fake new. I think maybe one of them is actually new, depending on your interpretation of it. And it seems to me like a lot of people bought it, including some of my friends here on YouTube and even journalists. But the truth is, this bill will do nothing. It will change nothing. It's political theater and a repackaging of policies that already exist, and I'm going to show you why today. But I'm also going to show you why this political theater can be dangerous for our economy and why I don't support it. So before we get started, if you are one of the four in five Canadian mortgage holders who are worrying about mortgage payment hikes, please subscribe to this channel and I will keep putting out content that can help you. And if you are the other one in five Canadians, please subscribe anyways. I also give free hugs to subscribers, so comment down below to redeem your free hug. So I'm here to help you distinguish fact from fiction today. I'm here to tell you what you can actually expect from the new Canadian Mortgage Charter. And spoiler alert, it is absolutely nothing, by the way. So I'm going to explain to you why basically nothing will change. Cut through the fake news or fake new, as I'm calling it today. So let's get started here. The Canadian government is taking a page out of Louis Vuitton's book and repackaging existing items and reselling them as new. With the holiday season around the corner, it's only natural for us to want to re-gift things so I can get where they're coming from. I would encourage policymakers to re-gift responsibly and don't take credit for things that already exist unless they're just doing this as an awareness exercise. And that seems to be what they've done here by calling this set of six rules new. They start by saying the government is taking action to ensure Canadians know of the mortgage relief they can seek and receive from their financial institutions and announces new measures to provide tailored mortgage relief. So they started by saying that this was awareness exercise, taking action to ensure Canadians know of the the mortgage relief. They go on to say on the bullet point here and in their defense, it is a little bit more truthful that It builds on the government's existing guidance and expectations for how financial institutions are to work with Canadians to provide tailored relief and ensure payments are reasonable for borrowers. Mortgage holders in financial difficulty on their principal residence can expect to receive fair, reasonable, and timely mortgage relief measures from their federally regulated financial institutions, which are expected to proactively reach out to vulnerable borrowers and make full use of available tools to quickly and efficiently support borrowers through difficult times. So in that statement alone, they basically admit this is all existing guidance. Now let's get into it because all of these things are important for you to know as a homeowner. This is basically a list of forbearance measures. Forbearance is a process that can help you if you're struggling to pay your mortgage. And I will give credit where it's due. I respect that the current administration is raising awareness around these policies It is needed based on the fact that nobody knew that these things existed and a lot of people are calling them new. However, I will not give them credit with creating these policies alongside FCAC and OSFI, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions. But let's call it what it is. It's a list of things that already exist. It's not new. It's fake new. And unfortunately, the media took the bait and has been crediting them with changes. Here are a few headlines. What is the mortgage stress test and how is it changing? Fun fact, it's not. Federal government creates mortgage stress test relief for struggling homeowners at renewal. Ottawa loosens mortgage stress test in housing-focused fall fiscal update. And I can empathize with the journalists who wrote these things because I do think the party's objective was to make it seem like they created changes to bail out homeowners in an effort to get more votes. We have an election coming up. Okay, so let's dive in here. The Canadian Mortgage Charter. It starts by saying Canadians can expect, number one, allowing temporary extensions of the amortization period for mortgage holders at risk. So quick Google search for financial hardship mortgage assistance. 
and you get two articles from the Government of Canada website, August 9th and July 5th of this year. They outline expectations for financial institutions, which are expectations from the FCAC, or Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, to banks. FCAC expects banks to help individuals who may be struggling to pay their mortgages due to exceptional circumstances. And that includes people who have an existing residential mortgage on their principal residence and are at risk of not keeping up with regular payments. So that's the definition of your at risk for the remainder of this whole thing. Exceptional circumstances would include financial difficulties due to high household debt, increased cost of living, so just basically inflation. Everyone's experiencing that, which is fascinating from my perspective. Rapid increases in interest rates. Again, everyone is experiencing that. And rapid increases in interest rates, they go on to say, may have a major impact on your finances. This is the case if your mortgage has a fixed rate and is up for renewal and you're facing much higher payments. Variable rate and your payments are much higher or variable rate with fixed payments and you've reached or are expected to reach your trigger rate. So basically every single mortgage in Canada now at this point. If you are at risk of a mortgage default, your bank is expected to offer a mortgage relief measure or a combination of relief measures. So here's that little known rule that I promised I'd share with you. If you're experiencing financial hardship, and this has almost always existed to my knowledge, you can call your bank, claim financial hardship, and they will automatically extend your amortization to 40 years. And this has existed long before this new set of rules came into play. I also want to quickly direct your attention to the CMHC website, which has similar language that came out at the onset of the pandemic. And that was among the search results for the term that I mentioned before. The tools that may be available to you include short-term mortgage payment deferral, extending the original repayment period or amortization, adding any missed payments or arrears to the mortgage balance, moving from a variable to a fixed rate mortgage and special payment arrangement. These are from the pandemic response on the CMHC website. So when you see these rules, it's no wonder that Canadian mortgage delinquencies are so low. You ha almost have to be deliberate to be delinquent with a big six lender. You have to like not respond to the calls of them offering you support and assistance and trying to work this out. And this is why you see very few chartered banks represented in power of sales. I track power of sales and in the past year, there were only a couple of banks who had power of sales, institutional private lenders and individual private lenders and B-side lenders, you see a lot more power of sales. And by the way, I did do a video on CMHC's mortgage report, which this chart is from. I'd love it if you checked it out. It was about three weeks ago. I'll see if I can figure out how to put it in the card at the end of this video, but I'm still new to this YouTube stuff. Okay, so let's get back to the list. Number two, waiving fees and costs that would have otherwise been charged for relief measures. Going back to the July 5th and August 9th documents on the FCAC website, when that's the case, your bank is expected to offer the most appropriate mortgage relief measures for you. And then it goes down to say, waive prepayment penalties. Remember that one because it's coming up. Uh, for a lump sum payment to avoid negative amortization or when selling your primary residence. And then it says, waive internal fees or costs for a limited period when the relief measure starts and avoid charging you interest or on interest for a limited period in cases where relief measures result in ne negative amortization. This is all basically word for word from the Canadian Mortgage Charter, and this stuff came out, again, months ago. So this really is an awareness exercise from my perspective, and it's good that the government is bringing awareness to this stuff, but these are not new things. Let's just call it that. Number three, not requiring insured mortgage holders to requalify under the insured minimum qualifying rate when switching lenders at mortgage renewal. So you've got an insured mortgage, it's insured by, let's say, CMHC, and it's with TD, and on renewal, you'd choose to switch to RBC, but the insurance stays with CMHC, and so it doesn't need to be underwritten, re-underwritten. This is the one where you're hearing a lot of people talking about changing the stress test, reducing the stress test. So this article comes from Mortgage Trends on October 20th. OSFI report reveals largely unknown mortgage exemption. No stress test on insured switches. And it's talking about this report from the OSFI website, uh, which is from October 16th, 2023. We do not expect that the MQR be applied again if renewal is with the same lender because the existing lender has already done their due diligence. And it says insured borrowers, however, are exempt from the reapplication of the MQR when switching lenders at renewal. This is because the borrower's credit risk has been transferred for the life of the loan to the mortgage insurer, who is backed by you and I, by the way, the taxpayers. And here's a 2018 article from Global about the stress test called What You Probably Don't Know About Renewing Your Mortgage. It says if you're renewing an existing mortgage, you can avoid the stress test, but only if you stick with your current lender, which denies the possibility to shop around for a better rate. And this can actually be found in a document from the origins of the B20 stress test. 
entitled Final Revised Guideline B20, Residential Mortgage Underwriting Practices and Procedures from October 17th, 2017. And under the heading Requalification at Mortgage Loan Renewal, expectations around new loan documentation and adjudication or underwriting or uh, qualification for mortgage loan renewals have not changed and they're not expected to reapply the qualification rate assessment to existing borrowers that are renewing mortgages. Number four, contacting homeowners four to six months in advance of their mortgage renewal to inform them of their renewal options. Come on, really? You're gonna try and pass off a standard industry practice as a policy change? Your lender will call you and offer you an early renewal about four to six months out. And in a lot of cases, people aren't choosing to take these because the rates can change a lot in that four to six month period. They'll typically offer you that because it serves them as a lender and not you as a borrower. Your brokers and lenders will be chomping at the bit for a renewal today, especially in a market where new mortgage activity is at record lows. So remember, rates can change a lot in that four to six month time frame. And I don't necessarily know if the negative externalities of this are worth pushing it upon lenders. Number five, giving homeowners at risk the ability to make lump sum payments and avoid negative amortization or sell their primary residence without prepayment penalties. So most of this is already in the stuff I've showed you from FCAC, OSFI, and CMHC. The one thing on the list that could be new per se here is that it should exempt you from prepayment penalties in the event you're a homeowner at risk and have to sell. My thought is that if someone is at risk in those default scenarios mentioned before and the way that FCAC described them in the documents that I wrote before, um, if that's the case, the bank is likely already making compromises to help that person sell their property and accommodating the fee environment to make their sale profitable for the bank. I'm not even going to touch on number six, not charging interest on interest in the event of, that a mortgage relief measure results in a temporary period of negative amortization because nobody's really doing that. People who are negatively amortizing are having their principal stacked back into their loans, not their interest. And this was outlined in those original FCAC sites from August and July that I showed you prior. And this is where I want to just conclude by saying political theater becomes a little bit dangerous from my perspective. Now that you've got a bunch of people thinking I can get out of paying my mortgage or I can sell without a penalty, you've created a bit of a moral hazard. Canadian banks, which is really the bedrock of our economy, you can't start doing that. You're creating two bad scenarios. And this is really that division that you're starting to see in the Canadian economy and, and socioeconomic sphere. You've created owner versus tenant in this byproduct way, and you've created owner versus the bank. The first one, you saw this during COVID, and it didn't end well, is when owners were given mortgage deferrals and tenants weren't given the same thing. You're favoring one class over another, and you're dividing them solely based on whether or not they own a home. Canadian tax policy does this too by giving homeowners exemptions on capital gains, Whereas in order to have the same tax treatment as a renter, you'd almost need to be able to tax deduct your rent entirely against your income to have the equivalent tax advantage over the lifetime of your rentership versus ownership. So you're furthering that divide between tenants and owners. I actually think it's a political move that could backfire in an economy where you're seeing a huge decline in home ownership and a huge vocalization of the class of renters in younger people right now. And the second one is you can't create an us versus them mentality between banks and owners. It is dangerous to start eroding the moral fabric around whether or not Canadians have to pay their mortgages or whether or not the mortgage is a serious obligation. Canadians love paying their mortgages and that's why the market loves Canadian banks. But now these banks are being forced to shore up loan loss provisions and the tools that they have to let the market run its course are being taken away from them. It's interrupting Darwinism, evolution by natural selection, the natural course of business. And you can see it reflected in their earnings. Look at Scotiabank's growth in the past due loans and provision for credit losses that came out yesterday in their quarterly report. And that's not good. It's not a good direction to go as an economy when you start eroding our faithfulness to be honorable in business and in debts. When we talk about this, it's actually interesting because the Bank of Canada has done an economic study on the impact of a potential debt jubilee. It's available on their website. I think if you just search debt forgiveness, Bank of Canada. But in almost all cases, the best thing that you can do in a situation of financial hardship is to get free of that liability, get free of that asset. It's 
to sell. And I think it's disingenuous and dangerous to encourage people to white knuckle it through these hard economic times in hopes that better days are ahead for rates and for prices when you've got an era of fiscal dominance where the government is spending so much that monetary policy cannot impact inflation in the way that it should be able to. And you've got a central bank who is saying as a result of that, rates will likely be higher than they were forever, not just higher for longer. So that's all I have for you today. Be safe out there. Be nice to each other. Like, subscribe, comment below, and let me know if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos.